Afghanistan 2001. Afghanistan 2012. And the long war goes on despite the presence of thousands of US and NATO troops, the level of violence is still rising. The relationship between Afghanistan's government and its best ally, the US, sorely tested in recent weeks, with mass protests after copies of the Quran were burned and outrage when a US soldier massacred 16 Afghans. With the Taliban strong at home and tensions simmering with its neighbor Pakistan, international forces are already starting to withdraw. Most will be gone in 2014, and adding to the uncertainty for Afghans, that's the very same year their president is due to stand down. Is Afghanistan spinning out of control? or has the country still a chance for peace? Today on Talk to Al Jazeera, the Afghan foreign minister tells us his country is close to reaching a deal with the US that would build a new long-term partnership. He's also hopeful peace talks with the Taliban, stalled for now, can be restarted. Dr. Zalmay Rasul, Foreign Minister of Afghanistan, you're here in Doha, Qatar, uh, for a visit. This is the place where Taliban talks were supposed to take place, and yet the Taliban pulled out. Can you give us the latest information on those talks? Can they be restarted? Uh, thank you for receiving me. Um, I think before starting to say that it's imp imperative that uh, in order the peace process to succeed, it needs to be, going to, to be Afghan owned and Afghan led. And that is the reason uh, I am here in Qatar to discuss with uh, our colleague and brothers, government of Qatar, how we can work together to put in place the environment through which the peace process and the talking with Taliban are going to start. You say they have to be Afghan-owned, Afghan-led. Has the government of Afghanistan be, been bypassed in recent months then? Not bypassed, but, we have been, but not directly involved, if you want, at least in the Qatar process. Uh, so uh, the reason that uh, we approached the uh, Qatari government and the reason that I've been invited to come here had two volley. One is to talk about the peace process and put in place the right contact between our two governments. And number two, to work together to upgrade our bilateral relation and other issues. This process until now has been led by others, the Germans and particularly the US. Are you happy with the way they've led this particular stage of the peace process here in Qatar? I think it was led by Afghans. The idea of peace process was Afghan but the, idea. But the Qatar element? I think the Qatar element, uh, uh, we have discussed it with our American friend and they agreed that uh, it should be an Afghan-led and Afghan-owned process in order to succeed. Of course, our international friend can, can help in, with us, but the process uh, should be Afghan-led and Afghan-owned, and the Qatari brothers are creating the environment through which we can start that, that contact. But the Taliban have pulled out of this process, and they say it's because of the Americans. They say the Americans made promises they haven't kept. That is something that between Taliban and Americans. What we, Afghan, wants the Afghan government is uh, a peace process, a peace negotiation, which has been decided through the, our peace jirga. Uh, the condition of this negotiation has been cleared by a, a majority of Afghan people, uh, also including women in Afghanistan, because also they are very much interested in that peace process. So according to that, we are uh, in, in, in a trying to establish that contact. And of course, the, our uh, Qatari friends and brothers are creating this environment. Part of the original deal, though, was supposedly, according to the Taliban, for the Americans to release five prominent Taliban prisoners from Guantanamo as a confidence-building measure. Does the Afghan government want those people released right now? Yes, they are, uh, they are uh, Afghan citizens of the world, and uh, we, we want them to themselves decide if they want to come back to Afghanistan or go back to another country, Qatar, for example. Uh, a delegation from our government went to Guantanamo and uh, interviewed and discussed with those people. Uh, we don't want them to become as a prisoner because as a prisoner they should come back to our own country. But if they are freed and, and wanted 
freely to join their family in Qatar, we have no problem with that. So what would you say to members of the American Congress who say there's no way that those men should be released? But that is something that, uh, that uh, the Americans should decide. From our side, we want not only this five uh, prisoner, but you want the 20 or 20 so of other Afghans than this Guantanamo should be given to Afghan government. What's your understanding right now of the Taliban and their position? Is there one Taliban speaking here, or are the Taliban divided on the whole issue of talking or fighting? You know, in any uh, major uh, peace process discussion, uh, they need to be start somewhere. Uh, and after that, we'll see where we go. I think the first important point is to start this negotiation, this discussion. And uh, I'm confident that uh, uh, sooner than later, this contact will be established. Because just a few days ago, I was in Kunar, and Al Jazeera spoke to a Taliban leader there who said he didn't think there was any way that they were going to get what they wanted by negotiation. He said the only way was jihad. What do you make of those sort of comments? We have contact with those Talib, the other leaders of Taliban who want peace. After all, 10 years of war has uh, cost a lot for everybody, the Taliban also. And there are people among themselves that believe it's time now to reconcile and integrate in the Afghan society. It was interesting in Kunar because there the Taliban control, after the Americans pulled back, quite large swathes of territory. And there the Taliban have brought back the vice and virtue police. Is that something that, that having them back, is that something you would be prepared to countenance in your negotiations with the Taliban? I think our red line are very clear, you know, uh, respect of Afghan constitution. Uh, within this framework, the constitution, those who have not committed uh, crime against the Afghan people, those who are not linked to Al-Qaeda and other terrorist group are welcome, are welcome to, to integrate the Afghan society and through, in the framework of our constitution, can participate in, pol in the political uh, structure of Afghanistan. Are you prepared to compromise on the constitution? Because you speak to the Taliban and they say, you drew up the constitution at Bonn and we were never invited. This constitution is not created by the uh, by Afghan government. This constitution has been approved by Afghan lawyer Jirga with one month of continuous discussion and bargaining. So it is not something the government will decide. It is a decision of the people. But the decision of the peace Jirga is that uh, Afghanistan wants peace. The Afghan people are tired of this war. And at the same time, the condition for this peace to happen is to respect of our constitution. That is the red line. Let me ask you about what's going to happen in the future after 2014. That's the date most of the international troops are supposed to leave Afghanistan. You're now negotiating right now with the Americans on what role American forces will have in your country after 2014. Tell me how those negotiations are going. I think we are now uh, having uh, progressing in this negotiation. You know that there was two difficult points in negotiation. One was the issue of the prisoners and prisons in Afghanistan that has been sorted out. We have signed the MOU a couple of weeks ago. And the second issue was about the night raids and special force operations, which we are under discussion. A lot of progress has been made. And I'm confident that very soon we are going to see the second MOU. When this two uh, difficult issue out, I think that the framework, we are ready to sign the framework of a long-term strategic partnership with the United States, hopefully very soon. Well, let me ask you about those two issues. I know I've read your memorandum of understanding with the Americans on Bagram Prison, but there's one bit you've left out. What about the non-Afghans who are being held in U.S. custody? What's going to happen to them? What is, what was, what's very important, uh, sir, on the issue of prisoner is the sovereignty of Afghanistan. An Afghan citizen should be in jail by control by Afghans. Uh, ten years on now, and the fact that 2014 will be the end of military operation of the NATO of Afghanistan, the sovereignty of Afghanistan is the main issue. So we are responsible for our own citizens. The issue of the foreign citizens which are in Afghanistan can be discussed later. Well, where are they going to go? There's we are we think somewhere between 40 and 50 people. The Americans are very secret and won't give the, the, the numbers. We are, we are going to discuss that separately because that's not the Afghan sovereignty issues. It is something between the two governments to, 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 to sort it out. But it's going to be sorted out before the full handover takes place? Of course. On the other issue of night raids, Tell me how you're going to reach a compromise on that. 
what's been suggested is that every single raid would be approved by an Afghan judge. Is that the sort of compromise you're, you're looking at? What is important, uh, we have not finalized because we have not signed yet, but I think what's important is this uh, night raids uh, or the should be done, should be Afghanized according to Afghan constitution. So what is the Afghan constitution should be implied. Um, we have discussed the detail of that in an order under discussion. As far as I know, we have made a lot of progress. Once the same you will be finalized, we will give you more detail about it. Explain to me and explain to our viewers why the issue of night raids is so controversial in Afghanistan. It is controversial because uh, our constitution uh, says that uh, no force, no foreign force, and no force can enter an Afghan home. You know? and, 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 and despite that some success that night raiders had done, there is no doubt about it, it will become, it's starting to become counterproductive because uh, uh, when, a, when a house is raided uh, and a civilian has been killed, uh, that will become very counterproductive. And I think if we have decided, as you mentioned at the beginning, that uh, end of 2014, Afghanistan security will be controlled under control of the Afghan National Security Forces. It is time to start now building that, 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 that possibility. Done by Afghan special forces that are trained every day in the, cap in the capacity, according to our allies, is very good now. Less than a month ago, on March the 11th, we had the appalling massacre carried out by Staff Sergeant uh, Robert Bales. After that, President Karzai went further than banning night raids. He said he wanted American forces to pull out of the villages. Is that still the position of the Afghan government? You know, sir, when uh, 2014 is not far, and you, need, you cannot just end of 2014 start everything. We need slowly, slowly to prepare ourselves, both sides, for that end date. Now, the forces should withdraw from somewhere. They need to start to withdraw from villages, go to district, and after go to the town, and after go to their bases, and after leave. So that's one point. But also you know very well that the presence of, uh, of the forces, uh, foreign forces, NATO forces, uh, in, the, in the small villages will become a time counterproductive. You say that 2014 isn't far away. Well, 2013 is much closer. It's only a year away. And it appears that some governments, particularly the American government, is now keen to speed this up, to possibly leave much earlier. What does the Afghan government make of that? And are you worried that they're cutting and running here? I don't think there's the issue of cutting and, and running. The, 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 the time of the end of 2014 is agreed upon in Lisbon and everybody agreed upon. As I mentioned to you, to reach end of 2014, we need gradually this, uh, this, this, uh, uh, taking this responsibility. So gradually mean if you want to take the full responsibility, if you want to take the full responsibility of end of 2014, we need to start to take this responsibility slowly, slowly, starting by 2013. Actually, today you know by transition, uh, half of the Afghanistan is now under control of Afghan National Security Forces. And we are, it are starting now to prepare ourselves for the final third tranche, which will take in consideration the most difficult area uh, bordering Pakistan. 2014 is when the combat troops, the foreign troops, will be pulling back. But you'll still be needing substantial assistance after that time, won't you? You need their air power, you need their intelligence, you need their spy satellites. You see, there is two things. One is the civilian part of the Afghanistan post-2014, and secondly, the security part. On the civilian part, the Bonn conferences in December was very successful. The majority, the quasi-totality of the international community came to that, uh, that meeting and uh, committed themselves to be with Afghanistan after 2014 for the next decade. Uh, so that was a ma major success. Despite uh, economic difficulty in Europe, in the United States and elsewhere, there has been a firm commitment to be with Afghanistan and not abandon Afghanistan after 2014, at least for 10 years. On the security side, uh, we need a presence to train and equip and support Afghan national security forces. That is the reason that we are discussing the strategic partnership with the United States. Uh, I think the, the result of that would be that uh, the remaining force of the United States in Afghanistan will be just for that you said, train and continue to equip the Afghan national security forces. But as you, as you know, we have also signed 
long-term partnership, military in security in, in civilian and economic with the United Kingdom, with uh, France, with Italy. Very soon we are going to sign with Germany. There is one we are going to sign in Chicago with Australia. And we are in discussion with the European Union to have the same kind of long-term partnership with Afghanistan. So, so, so we want that after withdraw, uh, while we are taking the full responsibility, the continuation of the support and, and of the, our allies of today. So how long will you need the air power of these NATO countries? We want also the more and more the Afghan have the air power. One thing we are discussing with our American friend, that Afghan air force uh, should be a, a, a good air force, uh, not only transport, but other. Also, we are discussing about the having the radar capability to have to control the sky of Afghanistan, etc., etc. So one of the major part of the uh, strategic partnership with the United States is uh, a continued help to capabilize the Afghan National Security Forces in the decade to come. Will there be restrictions on what can be done on these bases? Will America after 2014 be allowed to continue drone attacks on Pakistan? In the future, if Israel goes to war with Iran, will America be allowed to support it using air bases in Afghanistan? The, we have, in the principle, uh, the presence of the remaining force of the United States in Afghanistan is for training, equipping, and securing Afghan security, Afghanistan security. It has been mentioned, it's going to be mentioned, the main point, that this force is not for use against any neighbors in the region. So no more drone attacks after 2014 on Pakistan the territory? Afghan, the Afghan uh, soil will not be used against any country in the region. Including Pakistan. And I want to ask you about your relationship with Pakistan. When I listen, and I've heard so many speeches by President Karzai, sometimes he talks of Pakistan as this great friend. He once, I think, used the phrase conjoined twins about the two countries. And then other times he says that they're meddling, they're causing all the problems in Afghanistan. Which one is it? I think one thing is very, very, very important to know that without a full cooperation of Pakistan, a long-term peace and stability in Afghanistan to achieve is going to be very difficult. Uh, our goal is to convince Pakistan that the peaceful and stable Afghanistan will be in the strategic interest of Pakistan, because Pakistan also is suffering sometimes more than Afghanistan on the security issues and, 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 and other issues. So we are engaged with Pakistan to convince them to help us and help themselves first to fight together uh, terrorism and Islamic extremism uh, together. Uh, so the peace and stability will be put benefit for, for both countries. You use the phrase full cooperation. Do you believe you are currently getting full cooperation from all elements in Pakistan, or are there some elements, possibly rogue elements, still working against you? If, we, if there was a full cooperation, there'd be no fighting. So uh, we are in the way of, of, uh, of, of uh, coming to an agreement, there will be a full cooperation. And I'm optimistic to say that the trend is going to be in that side. But the future will tell us how much we can do for that. 2014, as we've discussed, is such a vital date because of the foreign troops, because of the end of the transition to Afghan control. But it's also the date on which President Karzai steps down. Afghans will have a new leader for the first time in 13 years. Do you think that this coincidence is unfortunate? Unfortunate, no, because that is the constitution of Afghanistan, and, and I think it is a good news that Afghanistan now has this democratic system which a trans peaceful transfer of power can be done through a election. But it creates so much uncertainty with the two things happening at the same time, doesn't it? That's correct. That is a very important time, uh, and, and our hope is that the election should be clear, that uh, the condition for this election should be well prepared, but that is that an, any country, an election bring a change uh, and some, some incertitude in Afghanistan more than other places because, as you mentioned, 2014 is going to be a crucial time. Last time there was an election, it was marred by fraud. There was deep controversy, even involving the election date. The opposition disagreed with the government of when the election should take place. When's your next election going to take place? Do you have an exact date? I don't have an exact date now, but it will, it will take place uh, in May, sometime in, in 2014. 
Uh, there is no doubt about it. Uh, you know, Afghanistan. Do you not need to settle the date pretty soon to avoid any further Maybe uncertainty? It's up to, up to the, the, uh, the Constitutional and Election Commission to do that. It's not up to me. Of course. Uh, but uh, certainly, the election will happen in 2014. Uh, I think Afghanistan is a young democracy uh, after 30 years of war. Uh, and if you take in consideration the example of other democratic, uh, young democracy in the world, we have done well. Uh, there have been problems. Uh, there have been election problems in other countries, not only in Afghanistan. But you're learning. You're learning, and I'm hopeful that next election uh, will be much better than the previous one. And do you think after 2014, after this election, Afghanistan will hold together as one unified country? Because senior diplomats, Western diplomats, have told me they think it's likely that parts will become less engaged in this, with the centre and will become fiefdoms of warlords? Sir, Afghanistan has been for 30 years in war with no real government. The people take this country together. If there was any possibility of implosion in Afghanistan, it would have happened before. Isn't it the foreign forces that are keeping you together in some ways? No. no. The foreign forces uh, helped us a lot uh, to liberate us from uh, Taliban and, and co. But the cohesion of Afghan Afghanistan people is the cornerstone of this country. Uh, you know that there was Soviet invasion, uh, the, the, the proxy wars in Afghanistan and, and other issues. But the Afghan people kept together each other, and I'm confident that uh, the Afghan people will stay together in the future. You say that, and it's only a straw poll. I've spent the last couple of weeks in Afghanistan, and I sense a real feeling of uncertainty in the Afga among the Afghans I've spoken to, particularly if you look at the economy, you look at property prices, they're plunging in Kabul, uh, the well-known Western Bank Standard Chartered pulling out of uh, your capital city because it's concerned about the future. How do you reassure Afghans? It is all these things that I mentioned to you, you know, the Bonn Conference, uh, the uh, partnership with United States and NATO, which are going to discuss with NATO also, the upcoming Chicago, Chicago Conference, which will be commitment of the NATO country for the sustainability of the Afghan National Security Forces. Upcoming conference in Tokyo in July, who is the commitment, translation of commitment to a long-term economy for Af Af Afghanistan. All this uh, uh, effort are to, to, to give this, uh, this assurance to the Afghan people that, number one, the international community and our friend will not leave us after 2014. Uh, and number two, uh, I think the, the election, uh, the, the consolidation of, of, of our constitution, the peace process uh, are other issues that we are, we, are, we are working on that. So, the Afghan people will be assured that they are not going to be left alone like in the past. You say that, and yet it's only my observations, but I've been going to Afghanistan over the last 11 years very regularly, and Afghan friends of mine, bright young Afghan friends, some of whom said they'd never leave Afghanistan, now come, on, come up and ask me, how do I get a foreign passport? Does that worry you? It does not worry me. I think those Afghans who want this country, who are giving their life every day for this country, they will stay. Uh, those who want a passport to leave, that's their business. These not those people who have gone to Afghanistan can, can count on them in the future. Some of those Afghans tell me the good days have passed. We won't make any money in the future. Those days have passed. All the foreign contracts, the foreigners leaving, we're going to be abandoned and there'll be no money for us in the future. There is no doubt uh, that uh, we will have a difficult economic times because a large part of GDP is because of the presence of the foreign force in Afghanistan, and that's in any countries, you know. We need, these forces will not stay forever, and should not stay forever. A day is coming that Afghanistan should take its own responsibility and live according to their own economic level. But Afghanistan, as you know, has tremendous economic potential, and, and, and mineral, and gas, oil, etc., etc. What we want, that in the coming decade, uh, the support of international community for Afghanistan will be an investment in our mines and, and infrastructure. So by 2024, Afghanistan will become a self-sustained country and not a country in need of donors. Dr. Zalmay Rasul, thank you for talking to Al Jazeera. Thank you.